Hello friends and uh, welcome to our course of crash course in MCQs. Okay, so this course is particularly intended for students of graduate level, electrical engineering students of graduate level who are appearing for graduate level examinations right from gate examination to a PSU level examinations, state level PSUs also. And apart from this, even students appearing for SSC or JE or RBJE or students from diploma level also can utilize this course just by isolating some subjects which is not required by the syllabus. So the best way to utilize this course is to just have a look at your syllabus first and see the content which is required for you. Okay. So the first topic that we are going to discuss is about power systems. So power systems forms the one of the important topic of all examinations right from gate examination to for that matter any examination. So it is very important for any exam aspirant for example I mean a competitive exam aspirant any student who is appearing for any sort of competitive exam it is his duty to know his boundaries of his swimming pool. Suppose you are getting into a swimming pool you must know what are the boundaries of that particular swimming pool. You must be knowing the depth as well as how far and how wide you can swim then you are the king of the pool same comes with competitive exam preparation so your pool is how you're preparing how extent what is the extent of your preparation in the syllabus because this is an ocean electrical engineering is an ocean so you must always have an idea about what are the topics in your syllabus suppose today power systems i'm going to discuss in power systems what are the topics available and what are the topics different type of topics and where you have to stress and where you need not to stress much depending upon the type of examination by observing the previous year paper patterns. So those things I will be discussing in this video series. So in this series our first subject is about power systems and in our code in our course the power system subject is coded as number one. Okay, so the number one code of power system, this particular power system is having different number of subtopics, right, starting from A to T, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A up to Q, R, S, T. Okay, so these are the extent of topics available in, available in power systems. I'm, these topics are mentioned in general for all examinations. Now I'm going to highlight for which kind of examination, what are the topics that should be preferred. So, I have divided this all topics up to T into some separate groups. Okay. Let us say this is group one. So these four topics comes under this first group. Okay. This is the group number one. <clears throat> and these remaining, these topics which are there, this comes under group number two. And this comes under group number three. And this is four. And this is five. So the entire syllabus of power systems can be divided into five groups having these subjects. So when we talk about gate examination, in with respect to gate examination, you must not leave this first topic, okay, this first group, because each and every one of these four topics is a very important questions. But if you observe the previous papers, even you take the paper of 2019 or 18, many questions, whatever the questions are asked, if there are six questions are asked, maybe six of them will be asked from these four topics only. Maybe you might be getting one or two questions from this. But most of the time, this forms the major weightage as far as gate exam is concerned. Because nowadays, gate exam is more sought after exam by many graduate students. Therefore, whoever is preparing for gate examination, and you have to understand the fact that power system has the second highest weightage in gate examination. And in that topic, this first group has got the highest weightage. And then comes the second group. Okay, when you prepare for um, ESC examination, then you have to cover all the five groups, okay, all the five groups. But when you specifically prepare for gate examination, you can utilize only these two groups, okay. If your preparation is limited only up to this first and second group, that is okay for gate examination. So as I am telling, please make notes of all these things and keep on writing for which examination, which groups to be preferred, okay. So for ESC examination, all the five groups must be given equal importance and more stress must be in this first and second topics only. Okay. Now coming to state level exams, PSU exams and JE exams. Now which topics are important for us? Okay. Nowadays most of the PSUs are preferring the gate syllabus in their syllabus. So under these conditions by observing the previous trends, 
I can suggest certain topics which will be helpful, okay, for uh, for preparing for PSU examinations. So in that condition, the topics that you must be giving proper stress is you have to give good importance to the first uh, the first group, okay. But you have to give the importance to the first group uh, mainly some basic level of problems because uh, in PSU examinations generally you are not supposed to use any kind of uh, scientific calculator as you have an online calculator in gate examination because gate has given you that facility he definitely will stress you on some advanced level problems so basically whatever the topic you prepare more than theory more the problems you solve that is more good for a gate exam uh, gate exam aspirant but whereas if you are appearing for some PSU or JE exam Kali the technical aspects about these subjects aapko bas hoga so that is the you know, main uh, core that you have to be concentrating at at the same time you must be also preparing for some the basic uh, some basic numericals on these topics and the second topic also this completely you can use whereas uh, when you come to gate examination you can omit this okay this H mechanical aspects of uh, power transmission lines and also you can uh, even omit the distribution system that is not much important but when coming to PSU examinations in specific okay in PSU examinations in specific okay everything is important but only the theoretical aspects and this protection this third group is the protection so this third group has got relays circuit breakers and using circuit breakers and relays you form some protection schemes so we will be discussing about protection schemes in these topics so basically what will be most important for uh, PSU exams would be generally uh, you must be concentrating mainly on circuit breakers okay and little bit on relays schemes you can or you may not prepare it's not a big deal okay and when coming to gate examination you can completely neglect the third one okay and even you can neglect the fourth one for gate examination as I was telling but when you come across PSU examinations, you cannot neglect generation. Power generation becomes a very important aspect. Whereas in uh, uh, gate examination, that is not a big deal. Okay. So generation becomes a very, very important aspect in this fourth group. In economic dispatch, generally we will discuss this kind of uh, topics like uh, penalty factor and uh, what is the economic uh, incremental cost finding out the incremental cost so you may be having at uh, maybe one question only one question that is hardly you can expect one question that is finding out the value of lambda that is the you no know, economic cost the the incremental cost value so that is the only thing that is important in economic dispatch and then coming to fifth topic load frequency control so this uh, this also a little bit important so basically what uh, basically expected in load frequency control is you have to find out what is the frequency when two machines or two synchronous machines are operating uh, different ratings of machines when you apply some load this kind of problems you will be expecting and in traveling waves there is not much but only some basic theory suppose if a traveling wave uh, uh, a overhead line is terminated by a cable or a cable is terminated by an overhead line what is the amount of voltage or current wave transmitted or reflected back such kind of questions some basic numericals are enough and HVDC concept you can neglect for PSU examination even in facts also you can neglect for PSU exam you may not uh, neglect the HVDC some basic definitions of HVDC classification of HVDC systems that you can prefer for a JE exam such kind of exam facts you can completely neglect okay so this is about the syllabus introduction so in general discussing about the topic of power systems generally you see power system we have to analyze the power system what is a power system power system is a system of a generating stations a network of conductors along with the load so you are generating power to convey to the load ye jo power humne generate kiya hai generating stations mein ise load station tak pahunchne ke liye you require a system of conductors or a network of conductors which you call the transmission and distribution system isn't it and it is a such a wide system okay because a power system is the backbone of the economy of any country you just switch off the entire power system for one hour and you see the result how it affects the gdp or the growth of the country so power system is a is basically a business power sector is basically a business it is a business that is run to run other businesses if this business of power sector doesn't run no other business can run in the any country for that matter okay so such an important power system has to be critically examined at every point of time 
from minute to minute second to second and it has to be analyzed so the what is the important aspect of power systems is analysis of power system so analysis of power system is basically performed in two states basically there are only two states of analysis what we call as steady state analysis and transient state analysis so let me give you a basic difference between what is steady state analysis and transient state analysis okay guys now you're watching this video i'm speaking something and you're listening now assume that i suddenly come out of your screen and i hit on your face what happens for a while for a few seconds you will be astonished what is happening over here how did this fellow come out of the screen and hit me so that that brief duration of time for a few seconds you don't understand what is happening or you are subjected to some kind of a shock so that kind of an analysis is called as that kind of a state is called as transient state and if you analyze a power system what do you mean by analysis of power system finding out some variable value finding out the value of certain variables what are the different variables that we that we generally have to find out in a power system basically there are two important power quality indices in power system which has to be properly monitored from time to time that is voltage and frequency so there will be a separate video where i will be discussing about the importance of voltage and frequency therefore you have to analyze what is the voltage and what is the frequency at all, at all points of a power system the next thing is the power system is it an ac power system or a dc power system that we are having today it is ac power system so when there is an ac power system definitely there is a flow of active power as well as reactive power active power is the cause of business or it is the centric of business hamara ye jo power sector ka business chal raha hai that is based upon the active power hum jo bills bande hai the, the way we are built by the power distribution companies is based on your active power con consumption बट ये पावर एक्टिव पावर जो है विच इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अवर बिजनेस इक्वली रिएक्टिव पावर भी हमारे बिजनेस के लिए बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट होता है ओके विदाउट रिएक्टिव पावर यू कैन नॉट ट्रांसफर द एक्टिव पावर आई विल गिव जस्ट अ स्मॉल लेम एन एग्जाम्पल एज हाउ वाई अ रिएक्टिव पावर इज इंपॉर्टेंट लेट एस से ओके यू आर ऑन अ लैंड मार्स देर आर टू लैंड मार्सेस लाइक दिस ओके यहाँ पे और यहाँ पे दोनों लैंड मार्स है ये दोनों लैंड मार्स के बीच में एक नदी है You are having a river in between this both landmarks. आपने एक प्लॉट खरीदा है यू हैव परचेज द लैंड ऑन दिस एंड यू वॉन्ट टू बिल्ड यू वॉन्ट टू बिल्ड सम हाउस ओवर हियर एंड दिस फेलो नाउ यू आर हियर आपको यहाँ से यहाँ तक पहुँचना है एंड आई हैव गिवेन यू लेट एस दिस इज एन ओल्ड इन डे आई हैव गिवेन यू सम थाउजेंड वुडन लॉक्स फॉर यू ओके आपके लिए थाउजेंड वुडन लॉक्स दिया ने दिया मैंने टू कंस्ट्रक्ट द हाउस ऑन द अदर एंड तो आपको उधर पहुंचना है इन थाउजेंड को लेके बट हाउ डू यू गो देर वट इज द वे दैट यू कैन गो देर बिकॉज देर इज अ नदी है बीच में आपको उधर कैसे पहुंचना है सो वन थिंग दैट आई विल डू इज और वट वी कैन डू इज इन थाउजेंड में से एक टू हंड्रेड बाजू हटाओ एंड रिमेनिंग एट हंड्रेड बाजू हटाओ ओके ये जो टू हंड्रेड आपने सपरेट कर दिया है यूजिंग दो टू हंड्रेड वुडन लॉक्स एक ब्रिज बना दो ओके ओके okay, 200 से आपने ब्रिज बना दिया और उस तरफ रिमेनिंग 800 लकड़ी को लेके आप चले जाओ और आपके जो भी घर चाहिए वो घर बनाओ तो इधर आपने आपको मैंने आपको कितने वुडन लॉक्स दिए आई हैव गिवन यू थाउजेंड और इनमें से आपको कौन कितने नंबर ऑफ वुडन लॉक्स आपको एक्चुअली यूज हुआ 800 हंड्रेड इज इन इट लेकिन आपको एक्चुअली यूज हुआ जो है दैट इज एट हंड्रेड दट डीन दैट द रिमेनिंग टू आर वेस्ट ऑफ दैम are not waste without this 200 you wouldn't have constructed this uh, bridge and you would not be able to utilize at least this 800 ye jo 200 which directly did not help you it indirectly help you this is the reactive power and jo actually aapko help help kiya hai that is the inactive power ab yaha power factor kya hai active power by reactive power i can say 800 by 1000 this is point eight i can say so this is a simple layman example so that is the importance of power system power uh, reactive power so the business is entirely active power centric but at the same time to convey this active power properly you require reactive power support at every bus or every point of a power system so it is very necessary to study about reactive power management also reactive power badh gaya to problem hai reactive power kam hai to problem hai because reactive power directly affects the voltage so how these kind of things will be there and everything is interlinked 
and uh, in energy system structure generally we will discuss about the structure of power system right from the generating station to the load and different kind of voltage levels different kinds of conductors used skin effect proximity effect corona effect all these effects will be discussed in energy system structure and in line parameters we will be discussing about the parameters that is resistor inductor and capacitance in a transmission line different configurations of transmission line and how do they affect rlc parameters transposition interference this kind of things will be discussed and line performance line performance will be told. so in the entire power system that is which is consisting of a generating station and a load point in between up ko age or transmission distribution network hai. this is the widest or the biggest network or biggest part of a power system that is a transmission link so it is very very essential to understand the performance of a transmission line so basically we divide the transmission line based on certain factors like frequency kilometer into short medium and long and we will analyze the performance that is how how much voltage you're sending and how much you're going to get at the receiving end such kind of things and then mechanical aspects of designing a power system or a transmission line for example the height of the tower what is the you know string efficiency and the sag calculation such kind of things will be involved in mechanical aspects and then in cable nowadays we are moving towards cables right from overhead to cable system so it is very important to understand about different types of cables and i have explained the importance of reactive power management also so what i am telling is in a very brief manner i am not going too deep okay because that will be dealt in the course and about distribution system after transmission you have distribution system types of distribution feeders and all and you have to study it is very important to study the per unit system also for example so per unit system is a very universal system which will actually make our analysis of power system very simplified so that thing also we will discuss in the course and then fault analysis see you are having a such a big power system and power system forms the second largest market in india basically that means the worth of power system is very high the cost of lines cost of substations is very high and such a power system is always you know basically where it is erected on the outside there are some atmospheric factors some external factors that will try to introduce some disturbances and there are certain internal factors also that may introduce some disturbances because when you are having such a complex and a big system definitely there is some chance of some disturbance to enter so one kind of a dangerous disturbance is a fault that there are different types of faults like symmetrical faults and unsymmetrical faults and we are analyzing those faults and then after fault occurrence or some kind of disturbance occurrence we are going to analyze how stable the system is that is in the stability analysis and you have load flow analysis the entire power system is built to supply load what do you mean by load apply supply of active power at the same time to supply the active power you require reactive power and you have to maintain proper voltages so the topic which deals with active power reactive power voltages and voltage angle delta at all nodes in a power system is a load flow analysis so i was telling that power system will be analyzed in two states steady state and transient state analysis i told you transient state means that moment when you feel some kind of a change from a regular routine so basically power system always most of the time is subjected to transient state only because the load on the power system never stays constant or something or the other thing will be happening in a power system so it is very important to understand how the power system behaves under such kind of a changing or dynamic conditions but generally we will assume how power system is static that means suppose the load connected on the power system is constant it does not vary or the generation connected to the power system is constant it does not vary or there is no fault occurring on the power system there is no loss of transmission line such kind of analysis will also be there so basically we this first part is basically deals with the analysis part only so ye jo fault analysis and stability analysis hai these two comes under transient state analysis whereas load flow analysis is a steady state analysis again traveling wave analysis is a transient state analysis okay and uh, line performance is again a steady state analysis okay so this kind of analysis is also very important of analyzing a power system in transient state and steady state so this is entirely the discussion regarding the uh, power systems syllabus basically i just want to introduce the syllabus and extent of syllabus in general of power in general in subject of power systems and the topics that you have to be concentrating while appearing for different kinds of competitive exams i hope you like the video thank you